one. Super friend. Sit down. Chief. <laughs> what? So what that was, everybody listening and or watching, if you might remember from last week, I was going to look up how to say bitch in different languages. No! <laughs> <laughs> What language is that? Dutch. I love that. So that's why I asked but, you, behind the scenes, I asked Vince uh, to pick a number between 1 and 42. I love there that. There was 42 languages listed in the article I was looking at. He picked Dutch. That every week, we're just going to have to look up a new language. T- write, the, write down the ones we've done so we don't redo them. We're going to make our way through every language. T-E-E-F. Teef. Teef. <laughs> well, what's up, Teef? <laughs> across from me are you ready for this i thought so long and hard about this in the shower across from me the beautiful the outstanding the punani protector alex <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah i like it across from me the you have the archduke of ass play the baron of butt stuff vince stampoulis see it's so much easier to make a joke about gay people we're just we're just walking jokes i just i am just a better wordsmith because I guess I'm much lamer than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't disagree with that. What's up, guy? Not a whole lot, if I do say so myself. Um, there's been a whole lot going on that we've been talking about behind the scenes. There's a whole lot going on that we're going to talk about today. There's a whole lot going on in the holes in your life. There's a whole lot of holes. There's a whole lot of holes. <laughs> can't have your hand in too many holes. Yeah. Or you can. Chariot. Is that what happens when you fist two people? Mm-hmm. Chariot racing. Chariot racing, your gay term of the day. That's spectacular. Thank you. The Greeks, you. the it's Greeks, so you know, the Greek... Who needs a Trojan horse when you have a chariot? Oh, my God. The <laughs> Greek mythology is just so openly gay. Just the, like, Ben... Greek people in general. Met anyone in Mediterranean. Like, ben, okay. Ben-Hur, like, the chariot race. And like, <laughs> and like, all I'm thinking about now is I'm just going around the Colosseum, just... Just, just wrist, just wrist deep and oh, wrist with, deep with J Lube. No, they used olive oil back then. Olive oil? Wait a minute. <laughs> no, because I've actually used olive oil as lube. Can I tell you? <laughs> That's where times call for desperate measures. I mean. Olive oil, not the best lubricant. Very, very hard to work with. And I don't care for the particular like smell it leaves. Is it because it spits at you? No. When, when it gets too hot. <laughs> I mean. In terms of in terms of oils, coconut oil is probably the best. Just to whack it off with. And you're moisturized. You're already rubbing coconut oil on the body after a shower. Just give a quick wank. Going with the Euro terms with wank. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell I've been watching a lot of BBC? <laughs> I know you watch a lot of BBC at home. <laughs> um... <laughs> if BBC like knows that people can get confused from that I don't doubt that that's and no no uh no no offense or shade or anything to Brooklyn Barbell Club but uh I know like I wonder ugh. if they get so confused <laughs> a lot of things are BBC's really like big beautiful cock is that not just a different way of saying the other version which is just oh, big BBC. black thing? I'm just it doesn't have to be black. It could just be beautiful. Have you never seen a pretty penis? I can't say I have. I mean, I also don't know, like, what would categorize a pretty penis. Like, does it, does it like, oh, when it comes out? Or uh, does it shine? Does it, like... I could show you some ugly Does it, like, slow... I don't want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> like, does it, does Did it, you like... remember when that guy sent me dick pics during lockdown and was like, will you cut my hair? Yeah, I remember you <laughs> telling me about that. Like, what the fuck? It's funny that you what said that. that. It's funny that you said that, too, because, like, when I... When I you put the image of pretty penis in my head. I think of one that just like turned the corner in slow mo and just like the shaggy hair like got whisked away to one the side. Foreskin just <laughs> instead of hair, it's just foreskin. Oh, wow! Good God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, very fitting for oh what God. we're talking about. Uh, my beer today is called Fruit Project, Vince. Say what? You're what? My beer. It's called Fruit, Fruit Project. Fruit Project. I love that. What does it taste like? Fruit. Uh, it's a little peachy. Okay. Ooh. Let me go ahead and unscrew my brew here. Oh, in fact, if I could. Is that a dog? 
No. Well, it's that's trees. a that's a dog. I know that, but I thought that's a can. No, it's like a mad scientist and some other stuff. Oh. But uh, from since this angle, it looks. Oh, now I see it. Passion fruit and peach. Hmm. Um, if I could, if you uh, viewers, if you notice, my roommate is back in action for today and moving forward. I just kind of keep forgetting it. Uh, I would love to say happy birthday to the oh, that's right, it's her birthday owner and purveyor of rugged rugged paw, rugged paw, rugged, rugged paw, um, rugged paw. Rugged Let's plug that name. Paw. Happy birthday, Ashley. Happy birthday, Ashley. Hope you I had know her mom. The best Barely day. Barely know her. <laughs> that's all you need. All you need is a beer. Have a great if day. You're Alex. And yeah, also I'm, I'm a very simple man. Woman. It's also, um, today is Monday, we're recording, and it's International Woman's Day. So, happy International Woman's Day to Ashley on her birthday. That's a pretty, like, badass double holiday for her. Yeah, absolutely. And happy Woman's Day to all the women out there. All the women? All the women. All the women. <laughs> I've been watching, wait, I've been watching a lot of BBC, and then I've been, the other night, because we're preparing for our Wednesday showdown with Jackie and oh, Housewives. God. I actually was watching, like, compilations of Real Housewives of New Jersey fights, and the one who got the table flipped at her has the tendency to, to, instead of saying women, say woman. And it just is stuck in my head now. Yeah, I know somebody who uh, takes words like um, lives or like knives and they'll say lifes or knifes. Okay. And I just want to like scream at them so terribly. And I can't, I just, it's such a simple thing that really shouldn't bother me, but it's just like when you do that. It's just the worst. And also, the other day, I heard the same person use the term ESPN, like I have ESPN, and I couldn't tell if she was serious. To the point where I... I have ESPN? To the point where... It's a direct line from Scary Movie. I'm fucking dead. How stupid is this person you're talking about? Potentially pretty stupid. I got my Mr. Burns fucking hands on right now. (laughs) Excellent. Excellent. Ooh. That did good. that sound good? Um, that I have no good. idea how my impressions sound because my voice in here sounds so different than the voice there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is Women's Day. I just Women's Day. Women. <laughs> I'm sorry. Damn International it. Women's Day. International sorry, everybody. Women's Day. <laughs> sorry to Danielle. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> truth. Truth be told, though, and like I don't want to be cliche, but let's be real. Every day is Women's Day. No. No. No, because some days are for men, and some days are for people who are non-binary. Some days are for Jesus. Sundays are clearly not for Chick-fil-A. Yeah, God. Yeah, but you can just, like... Saturdays are for the boys. You can be respectful to everyone. And just, oh, you know, absolutely. That's, that's it. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> oh. I mean, there should just be, like, a general sense of respect amongst your peers and for people Yeah. in general. I would like to think it's called, like, humanism or something. Yeah, human rights. I'm down for that. I'm always down for a good cause. Now, one thing uh, that's not so fun and not so exciting. Today is March 8th. Yes. Correct? Oh, March yeah. We're, we're ranking real close on the anniversary. That's exactly where I was getting. If I'm not mistaken, it was it was Pi Day, March 14th, where the official lockdown was uh, put into place. I know. I don't no? think so. It wasn't the 14th? No, because the last thing that I did before, like the last fun thing that I did was we went out for my mother's birthday on March 15th. That was the most, most expensive dinner I've ever gone to in my entire life. And I paid for it in front of everybody. And then I was like, oh, now I'm unemployed for three months. Whoops. <laughs> that That's $600 would have been so handy. <laughs> and then... um. Cinco, Cinco de Mayo is May. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, we're what like... What is the holiday in March? St. Patrick's Day? There you go. Wow. I'm so sorry. Illiteracy. St. Patty's Day was the 17th. Not knowing what day it is has nothing to do with your literacy. I just want to make that perfect. No, I know. <laughs> I just... I'm sorry. No, because you know what it is? Um, in terms of, like, drinking holidays, you've got... Those are, like, the two main holidays for drinking. St. Patty's Day and um, Cinco de Mayo. And I always do the opposite. So on Cinco de Mayo, I go to like a pub. And then on um, St. Patty's, Patty's Day, Day, I go to the Jose Diaz. Because they're always empty. That's a, you know, honestly. It's a genius idea. It, it's pretty solid, honestly. I got to give it to you. Yeah. So St. Patty's Day, I remember people were like super cautious. And then the 19th, it was a Thursday. 
we got word the governor was shutting down all non-essential businesses. I'll never forget that day. I'm happy you brought this up because though we're a little late, Texas, come on. Oh, all right. Come on. Mississippi, Georgia. A lot of states are opening up um, without mask mandates. This Really? The CDC, yeah. But the CDC just released today that if you are fully vaccinated, that you can be indoors without a mask on. I'm... I'm not saying that, like, I'm not skeptical. I can't help the the pandemic paranoia mm-hmm. that it's instilled in me. I'm probably, like, I was actually on, like, a standby list today to get vaccinated. And I didn't get vaccinated. But. Yeah, I've been very on the fence about it because, like, I still want to see how things go. It's, it's kind of like when you, like, uh, when, like, the PS5. Like, when that came out or when any new system came out, I'm using this as an example because there's always bugs. There's always yeah. something in the trial phases where they people buy it and then something goes wrong and then they got to work the kinks out. Of course. So that's that's kind of how I stand. It's not that I'm against it. I'm just like... It's an extremely common um, retail practice. You know, you make a product, you send it out, you get reviews, and then you fix the problem. Oh, another I hope they don't do that with a vaccine. <laughs> yeah. But I know that like the the process for producing this vaccine was done in a completely different way than most vaccines. I mean, um one of my one of my clients was breaking it down that normally you do you you know, you you formulate the vaccine and then you get you test the vaccine and then you mass produce the vaccine and it's all these like month long processes that they were doing all at the same time. So they were coming up with a formula, mass producing it, testing that, stockpiling the rest. And then fixing what wasn't working. So that's how they were able to get the vaccine done so quickly. Plus, like, how many people were working on a vaccine at one time? Clearly someone was going to have a breakthrough. I'm going to trust science. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to trust the people that I know who've gotten vaccinated so far are haven't, like, grown a sixth finger. So. Yeah, I know a couple <laughs> people that are fully vaccinated already. They seem to be doing just fine. So we'll see. But um, on top of uh, also being a little late in terms of Texas and mandates and so on and so forth... Um, Dr. Seuss got canceled. Dr. Seuss? Yeah, you didn't hear about this? Yeah, apparently, like, a number of Dr. Seuss's books, I think six of them, had a lot of just, like, different racist undertones. And I believe it. I mean, it was... Two fish, red fish, blue fish. That's... You're color coding. I, I myself don't know the specifics of the books and what the details were. I'm going like, to look that up now, because I'm, I'm genuinely curious to see. But from what I understand, they're going to be reworked. And uh, at the same time, like, not... and. Heavy, heavy disclaimer here. I am not defending this at all. It was a different time back then. It's kind of like those Looney Tunes cartoons where people were like in blackface and stuff or like the, the crows. You know the crows I'm talking about? The no. very obviously racist crows. From where? Looney Tunes or like that. I wasn't a Looney Tunes War- person. Warner Brothers. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. About. Um, and then on top of that, there's also just a number of skits and stuff that they did with people, that they did with people in blackface. But, and again... Not defending it. It is wrong. And I'm going to say that again. It's wrong. I'm not defending it. Oh, it it's just like... a different time back then. And people just didn't really seem to care that much more uh, back then. And that's an insinuation. That's not a fact. I am just I feel speculating. like back then it was, it was more of a... This, it is what it is. Deal with it. Whereas yeah. now, like... No. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Doesn't fly anymore. Six Dr. Seuss books won't be published anymore because they portray people in hurtful and wrong ways. Huh. I don't doubt it. The six books are, and to think I saw that on Mulberry Street, if I ran the zoo, McElliot, wait, McElligot's pool? Mm. On Beyond Zebra. I've never even heard of these. Yeah, me neither. Scrambled Eggs Super, The Cat's Quizzer. Interesting. I have genuinely never heard of those books. <laughs> no, I kidding. was just was, like those six doctor. Like I mean, it's probably why they were bestsellers. It's probably why they're not more well known because they aren't giving people uh, a proper light. That's like because it took this long to get here. Like, oh, uh, hmm. if I. <laughs> If I could do a slight rewind, uh, I have to apologize because last week I only did half of what I said I was going to do. Half we- half half of which being the bitch in different languages. The other half being bringing ingredients to make Shirley Temples. I dropped the ball. I shit the bed on that one. But on Wednesday when I am birdboxing um, 
the New Jersey Housewives with my girlfriend and my boyfriend here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll make some Shirley nipples. Shirley nipples? Now they're called Shirley nipples. <laughs> pew, pew. What can I do to make it a Shirley nipple? You just leave the stems in the cherries. <laughs> put two. Put put a little kiss. Make them fembots. <laughs> put, put a little kiss, uh, Hershey kiss on the uh, on the cherries. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, oh, where she kiss its poop. <laughs> it's poop. It's a poop covered condom. Um, <laughs> Lady Gaga again. The references. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of cherries, <laughs> I thought you were going to say speaking of Lady Gaga. No, no. Speaking of cherries, um, and this will tie into stuff we're going to bring up later. I went to Montclair with Jackie, and there was this little coffee shop that I went to, Ooh. and the. One thing I don't like about some coffee shops is that they put up what their brews are and they just tell you like, oh, this is like our Costa Rican. This is our Ethiopian. This is our whatever this is. And I have no idea what that means. It's like, yeah, um, you have 17 different coffees. I have no idea what anything is. I'm not going to ask because there's people waiting. So the guy was like, hey, first and foremost, I love the way they were set up because it was set up like an old time movie theater where they talk through the little microphone and there's the screen, the like the plastic okay. barrier in between. They found a way to make it cute. It was like an intercom. Yeah. And the guy was super nice. like, hey, first time here, huh? I was like, yeah, how can you tell? He's like, you look super confused. He's like, I am. At and least he, he can recognize that. And uh, he's like, well, listen, obviously you're a coffee drinker. I was like, hmm. He's like, how about you try one of these weird things? I was like, what do you got? So I had, I forgot what it was called. I think it was called, it was called the Vincent Vega. In a paper paper plane coffee shop okay. in Montclair, it was a coffee soda. Huh. It was a what taste? It was a cherry vanilla Coke, maraschino cherry, shot of espresso. Ooh, surprisingly delicious. See, here's my problem. I don't like fruity coffees. I like a sweet coffee. Mm-hmm. I can't do the fruity part. I like like um Cal- uh, California Coffee Co. Like they have the Fruity Pebble one. I can't fuck with it. I love that one. I know it's so. And everyone says how good it is. I was so pissed because I when I went there, the person behind the counter had the this little sweatshirt, and I love minimalist designs. Yes, I love minimalist designs, and it was literally just hello our logo. <laughs> True. Yeah. It was literally just that coffee with a little bear on it, and I was like, hey, you got more of those. No, not right now. I was like, you bitch. <laughs> you teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when they restock, I want it. You I better restock or I'm coming over here and I'm going to chariot race till you get it. <laughs> some of their coffees that are coming out. Do you follow them on Instagram by chance? No. Dude, some of the stuff they're coming out with. Really? They have like some Ooh. kind of like honey lavender latte that they just released. That's a lot. It's blue. <laughs> That's a lot. That's why I want it. Honey it's lavender weird. and it's blue. Lavender's purple. I don't know, man. Blue coffee. I see. I can't drink a co- I can't drink something that's not the color of like a coffee shade too. A a blue coffee would make me like you're gonna be shit in blue. It's <laughs> you're gonna turn char- you're gonna turn blue like the fucking bitch in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Violet. Imagine and you drink that coffee and then just you turn into a cup of coffee, a big blue cup of coffee. I'd be okay with it. I'd drink you. <laughs> that's how they, that's how they get you down to size. They gotta drain the coffee out of you. Okay. Right. I'm not saying I will try it, but and I'll let you try it and take your word for it. I would totally. And then, like, just look at that. That's not coffee. I was going <laughs> to say, that looks nothing like a coffee. But I'm into it. Um, the other day I was at Starbucks. And this woman's complaining to the barista because her latte is too light. I thought you said the priesta. The barista. And I was just like, bruise for Jesus? Like, what? <laughs> Listen, pr- Priests need their coffee too. Oh, peace be with you. And oh. also, imagine like blood of Christ. No, I'm gonna have iced coffee. <laughs> peace be with you, and also with brew. Oh. Wow! Imagine a Christian coffee company. I think you started something. <laughs> that's the name. It's, that's the name of the company. Peace be with brew. It's so funny you say that because I remember one of my brother's friends told me he had a nightmare once where it, he had a dream about the like a Folgers commercial. And how the 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 logo, or no, I'm sorry, the, the slogan was the best part of waking up was folders in your cup. But for him, 
His got translated to the best part of waking up was Jesus in your cup, and his nightmare was that he looked down, and Jesus is in the cup. and Jesus' face was there, and he pulled him into the cup of coffee. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, that's legitimately terrifying." That's oh my god! I'm sorry. Don't ruin my paintings. I am sorry. I'm kidding. You're not though. Uh, well, yeah, don't ruin them, but yeah. it's okay if you stumble. They're they're pretty sturdy. So I was at Starbucks, and this woman is complaining to the barista that her latte is too light. Do you know what a latte is? Light colored or light, um... Like, there's there's too much milk in her latte. There's not enough coffee in her Isn't latte. Isn't a latte like 70% milk, if not more? Yes. Yeah. A latte one. is two shots of espresso poured over, poured with milk. And, the, like, the barista's like, you ordered a latte. And she's like, yeah, it's too, it's too much milk. And he's like, well, like, did you just want an iced coffee with milk? And she was like... Oh, I guess. I and I'm like, all right, well, bitch, drink your fucking latte then. Or you like, you you're mad at the barista because you ordered like an idiot. That's why people <laughs> should stop going to these fucking like the the coffee craze. If you're you're either gonna just drink your regular coffee like a like a basic bitch, or like take the time to learn what you're gonna drink and then order correctly. Right. Not only that too, but like in that situation, I'm sure the customer's not always right. Agreed. I'm sure in that situation, too, this person was like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll have that instead. <laughs> yeah, and I, they, I guess then, you can. Go ahead, peasant boy. Make me another cup. And then they expect it for free. Absolutely. It's nonsense. It's like, you, you fucked up. <laughs> Do you ever see any of the, like, um, like Instagram memes or TikTok videos of people who work at Starbucks? And it's like, they hand the coffee and it's like, sir, that was supposed to be ice. And they're like, oh, my bad. And they throw the yeah. entire thing and it spills everywhere. I love that. And then there's this one kid. He reminds me of the one character from Ratatouille, like the the guy with the curly hair, because he's got like the same style of hair. The main character? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Oh, wait. Is it that dude who screams? Yes. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking I about. I love that him. He's so, so funny. So obnoxious. It's great. He's so loud. I know. But it's perfect because like relatable content. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to scream. The other day I did that. The other day I was having such a rough morning. I don't know what's going on. The last couple weeks have been... Like, for some reason, I'll wake up and, like, everything will fall out of my hands. If I try to put something in the garbage, it jumps out. And, it like, wow! Like that. The, everything just wants to go wrong. And the other day, I, I just had had enough. And I grabbed a pillow and I put my face in it. And then I bent over and I just screamed into nice. my pillow. Sometimes you got to have a good scream. Yeah, and then I punched a hole in the wall. That's when I punched the hole in the wall. Huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's funny. I actually, it. I wrote down, um... Hole? <laughs> yes. It, yeah. How, how's your hole? Um, I wrote down it's a tender. How, like, how have you been feeling? Because, like, how's your equilibrium? Like, is it on its way back? Or are you still getting like real wonky? Um, no, still fainting, still faint. <laughs> Not really. I, um, I just hate when the bar, like, it's so heavy pushing on this. And then I don't know if you ever noticed, but like, this sticks out a lot further than this, and you can feel the difference. Like, I'll, I'll let you touch me after the episode and see. <laughs> <laughs> just another just another average Monday night. Just yeah, just another regular regular schmegula day. But like anytime something sits right here, Your business card it really that. it really just like crushes my windpipe and I can't breathe. That's why for the longest time I used to do all my jerks from down here. Mm. Remember how ugly my jerk used to be? I was like yeah. here. And I was like <clears throat> just like <clears throat> just <clears throat> throat> I saw a video from like the first barbells for boobs when everyone was lifting and that's when I like I think at the time I PR'd my clean and jerk at like 230 pounds when I was like still like getting stronger. And I just remember thinking like how ugly I looked doing it. It was so gross. And I'm over here thinking like, yeah, I'm a badass. Like mm, gay boys lifting on the weight in front of all these straight people. Woo. Nope. Saw the video and I was like, wow, you look ridiculous. Go home and cry. Go walk across the street and cry. So um, you want to tell me about your meat? Oh, yeah. Surprise, everybody. I'm competing in a weightlifting meet. Is that what I was asking? What meet? Why meet? No. Never you... mind. What? Tell me about the weightlifting meet. Fucking Wait. ruining the joke. God damn it. <laughs> I'm so confused. Wait, what? That was supposed to be a joke. Like, tell me about your meat and, like, tell me about your... Oh. <laughs> we can talk about my dick whenever you want. You don't have to be so coy about it. You could just say, tell me about your dick. Tell That's about not... Your... Tell me about your penis. That's not as... Tell me about your... <laughs> tell me about your anteater. Are you uncircumcised? Tell me about your one-eyed snake. (laughs) 
<laughs> What's the the moose Tell me about <laughs> the fuzzy old moose I love I love all the different. You like, sounded just like Cher. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I can't. I can't do a Cher impression. I wish I could. Every gay person should not, because Cher is not every gay person's uh, go-to character. But they just um, know how to do this thing where you like do the, the hair flip and you just. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> anyway, um, it's my impression of being shared. T- t- tell us about the weightlifting. <laughs> uh, Marble Weightlifting in Freehold. Hey, what's up? They have a podcast, Marble Podcast. We've talked about them several mm-hmm. times. I've been guests on there. there. And they're doing a weightlifting meet on March 28th, which um, I'll probably talk to Joe then about getting him on our podcast as a guest because he's cool. definitely... He's itching to come on. Is it really? Yeah, he That's really exciting. wants to be a guest. It makes me super excited. It is exciting. You know, speaking of other people who want to be guests and also on the, the segue of coffee, uh, our friend uh, Lewis, he actually has a whole Instagram dedicated to coffee. And different We've coffee, talked about it on here before. Different coffee shops. I know, I'm just kind of going over oh, it again. Yeah. Different coffee shops, styles of brews, how he likes to put things together, and like just his general passion. We're actually going to have him next week. Yeah, super and exciting. He's gonna. We're gonna have like a good old fashioned like science lesson and just shooting the shit and having some coffee. And it's, I'm uh, excited for him to teach me more about coffee. It's gonna be like if uh, I think it was an SNL skit where they talk the coffee talk. Coffee. Oh my god. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Uh, that's just my Staten Island mom impression. Well, that's perfect because. That's a. I, I already. Should I just do the entire episode I have next a, week in a Staten Island accent? God, yes. Um, if you do, you want to do it together? Oh my God, Allie, you you. I can't believe it. You did you get the cover deal? <laughs> what? I don't know. The cover deal? <laughs> is that a, is that a thing? Did you meant to? Did you mean to say cover goal? <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm saying. The cover Italian deal? nonsense. Uh, did you get the prosciutto? Huh? You got the mutts? What is the regat? Huh? Listen here, you fucking stupid girl. Let me tell you something about my family. <laughs> We're not doing that again. I did that last week. There was a, there was a period in my life. Uh, can, I, can I be vulnerable with you for a second? <laughs> can you say the word again? What? Can Is be, it the common deal? <laughs> can I be vulnerable for a second? There was, I, there I love was that a, you <laughs> fucked it up so terribly I and know. then you nailed it. <laughs> Listen, that's how I roll, all right? It may not get it on take one, but take two, and we're done. Uh, so there was a period in my life where my coworkers and I used to just bust into New Jersey Housewives sentences so you randomly mean- throughout the day. And we would scream them to each other from across the entire room. And so, like, it could, it could just be any given moment, and I would just say, like, I'm gonna rip her fucking head off! My father's untouchable! One of the best New Jersey Housewives reunions, season four. That sounds season four. So and much. Jackie agrees with me. I have to say, I've never met somebody who agrees with me like a, a, on the nose as much as she does oh when it comes God. to certain. I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I am genuinely terrified for this night to happen. As you should be. Yeah. As you should. I still, I've got plenty of snacks on deck. <laughs> I got the I pockets like, full of grub and the snacks I on feel, deck. I feel like we're gonna walk in on Wednesday. It's gonna be almost as if we're walking into just like a a bomb shelter. Or it's just like sis. It's gonna be set a, for a motherfucking mukbang. We're gonna we're gonna be mukbanging. Uh, mm, 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 uh, mm, I uh. really am gonna bring earplugs. Like I'm, <laughs> not even kidding. Oh, leave me. In the, I forgot I said that about the earplugs. Leave me in the car. I will fucking take a nap. You getting to my house and me and Jackie just geeking out over the housewives and you calling your mom like that little fucking boy on Mean Girls like, Mom, c- can you come get me? I'm scared. Yeah, I'm just gonna... <laughs> what if, like, I'm what if, like, Wednesday, host. Jackie walks in and you just, like, go into a time warp and we turn into housewives and we just start, start just going crazy in the episode? You see a whole new side of us. I, I genuinely don't have a response to that. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I've left you speechless. Uh, you've left me just with a real life nightmare scenario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just go, whatever. In in turn, some some heartwarming news um, that I had sent you the other day. Uh, again, probably a little late to the party. In Germany, circus acts started using holograms instead of live animals. Now, that's pretty badass, isn't it? Because now you can do so many cool tricks. Not only can you do so many cool tricks, and you can just kind of like. You can change sizes and stuff. You can warp imagination. And now animals don't have to get trained and 
be in captivity and anything like that. Held hostage. Exactly. That's fucking amazing. And and people don't have to clean up all that shit that comes out of the elephant's ass. That is also true. What it's a positive. Probably smells less mess. Probably smells way better than that. Can you imagine walking to a circus and being like, it doesn't smell like manure and hay. Where the fuck am I? They're gonna start charging a lot more money now, aren't they? Because it's now it's an elevated experience. I don't know, it's Germany, so True. I don't know if they're um, super money hungry over there. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I speaking I don't know of money hungry, did you hear about the space hotel? <laughs> what, Alex? You're bringing me so many things to talk about today. Dude, I went on a fucking tangent, and I could not believe that this is a. I thought it was like a, like a hoax. Like I thought it was like the Onion making this. Like no, I, that, no, the space hotel is a real thing. I, that's how I felt when I found out that Spinach could send an email. I forgot about that. <laughs> Spin it. The, no one. Listen. Also, every also, year someone's getting a glow up. One year it was avocado. One year it was coconut oil. This year it's spinach. Everyone's uh, the, the, like the vegetables are g- glowing up. G- g- glowing. G- 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 they're literally guzzling. They're, they're literally growing. Yeah. <laughs> um. I fucking hate you. <laughs> what an obvious. No- okay. You <clears throat> from what you just did. I'm I'm the bad guy. <laughs> <You> Shit bag. <laughs> um. But yeah, the space hotel. So there, whatever corporation or whoever's jumping in the Elon fucking Musk. gun and spending God knows how many probably billions of dollars to build a hotel in fucking space when there are people in the fucking street eating garbage and freezing and dying and God knows what. We're building a fucking space hotel. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> You know what would be so fun is if at, in the space hotel, instead of, like, taking a thing to get home, um, there's just a tube that connects it to, like, a port in the world, and you just shoot yourself down there, like, the water slide, just, <laughs> you know, where you, you, <laughs> no, you gotta exactly clench your butt that. cheeks together so the water doesn't go up there? Yeah, just, okay, just, you No air. <laughs> go down the slide, um, you'll be back home in about... Four seconds. <laughs> it's, it's about eight hours. It's a long time to travel. <laughs> True. Plus, you gotta like get through like gravity and stuff. Yeah, and you know, atmosphere, atmosphere, and <laughs> layers, ozone. There's a good chance, even at that speed You'll on die. the water slide, yeah, you're gonna die. There's a lot of G force. Probably can't breathe. And it's a space hotel, but also once you check in, you can never leave. Yeah, it's, it's the space hotel, California. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for validating um, my joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking about it. if if that was the, like in Futurama, mm. those tubes that would work. But um, yeah, again, what the fuck. Space Hotel? As long as it's nothing like the Nickelodeon Hotel, I'll be okay. <laughs> do you remember that? I that do. was a creepy fucking hotel. It sure was. But but think about it. Think about well, it. But like, how much is it going to cost to make in space? One, how much is it going to cost to stay at the hotel once it's built? One, where is it going to be? <laughs> in space. Um, is it just going to be like a fucking spaceship? It's probably going to be at the ISS. But here's my thing about that. One, how much is it going to take... How much money is it going to cost... To provide the fuel mm-hmm. to get the supplies from point A to point B. How, like and, and also I'm I know they have the International Space Station and stuff, but like their stomach? I don't know. Oh my god. I wonder if you can hear it on the recording. This is actually now now that I think about it, it's probably really stupid of me to think it's like, how are they gonna build in space? They're probably gonna launch it from the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was just gonna say, like, they're probably gonna build it here and then throw it in space. How are they gonna break ground in space? <laughs> how are how are they gonna build in space when there's no gravity? Everything's just gonna float away. Yeah. Everything's just gonna be Sandra Bullock in that one movie. <laughs> oh my god. Wasn't that movie called Gravity? Gravity, yeah. I never saw it. I heard it was amazing. I heard good things, and then I saw Sandra Bullock just fly into the air. I forgot to tell you, or I did, and I forgot. I don't know. I watched a movie. Uh, it was what, was it possibly framing Britney Spears at Hulu New York Times <laughs> documentary? <laughs> no, that's a documentary, not a movie. I watched, and stop me if I said it already, because I genuinely don't remember. I uh, I watched a Korean zombie movie, and it wasn't Train to Busan. Okay. And the whole basis of the movie is that there's a kid, like this kid and he's in his apartment and like his family goes out and he wakes up and he's just like looking out the window and he's like a gamer and like people on the game were like, dude, look, what's going on? Look, look. And he like gets up, watches the news, zombies in the streets, eating people, chaos everywhere. As it usually happens in a zombie So he movie. barricades himself in the apartment. And just plays video games for 16 hours. Until the power goes out. And that's the whole, the whole story is like of his survival. 
just in the apartment. And like the, the whole story is like based on his like will to survive his own like mental capacity, his hmm. survival instincts. I, I kind of was like, I got halfway through the movie. I was like, this is getting really fucking dumb. Like what is, what's going to happen? And then stuff does happen. I'm like, okay, I'm reinvested. This is some wild shit. I forgot what it was called, but I enjoyed it. I'm just going to say something that might be a little controversial. If there's a zombie apocalypse that happens, take me out. Like, just get rid of me. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight that hard to live. If it's a zombie outbreak apocalypse, because look at like just how the world's gonna progress from there. Do you really want to live in like that dystopian universe? Like Dude, we talked about like 17 episodes ago. Look at how we did COVID. Do you think we're going to survive Bruh. a zombie apocalypse? Imagine it's like, it's a zombie apocalypse. Quick, get all the guns you can. And people are going to be like, oh my God, my toilet paper is gone. Yeah. That's because we're American and we'll just, we'll buy whatever the fuck they tell us to buy. But the, the thing about it is there's a lot of factors. Because when you see zombies in movies or on TV, there's categories. There's your Night of the Living Dead, Walking Dead... Goodbye, Are Pen. you okay? No. Goodbye, Pen. Uh, zombies. That just like, they walk like a mile an hour. What Cardio. I, what I hate about these movies and shows is that if a zombie, a decaying being, is walking towards me at a mile an hour, I'm either grabbing the, <laughs> the nearest blunt object or I'm going to run as fast as I can. And just flying kick that fucking thing. I never understood the, like, unrealistic way people react to things in movies. Like, okay. Nobody ever goes for the legs. Exactly. Blow the knee out. You're done. Hello. Yeah. They can, oh, ooh, let's cut their arms off. Just fucking machete them hose. You really don't even need, you don't, you don't need, to, like, get just, a board of wood. <laughs> just woo slap them. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to the side, <laughs> hit the ear. <laughs> if anything, I'm just gonna start talking to them, and that'll just they'll be like, "All right, we don't need. We're gonna walk the aisle the way." <laughs> like, I'm just gonna be like, did you guys watch Housewives this week? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Teresa <laughs> lost her mind. <laughs> that's that's how I'm gonna stop the zombie. Apocalypse. You're gonna you're gonna hit them like um, any vocal based superhero. And you're just gonna, yeah. I was gonna say, stop, you read my mind. I was gonna say I'm just gonna yes, and it's gonna go to just the right pitch that they all blow up. It's gonna be like one that of those, was actually uh, a killing by the Vampire Slayer. One of their best episodes, oh season God. four. It's called Hush. This is the most ironic episode ever. It's an episode where these um they're called the gentlemen. They come to the town and they steal everybody's voices so that way no one can scream when they come to kill you. So no one knows they're getting killed. And um, oh, I lost my train of thought already. But they lost all their voices, and at the end, like, Buffy, like, crashes the box and, and makes the voices come back, and the only way for her to kill them is to scream at the top of her lungs, and she steals... Oh, now I remember what I was going to say. That episode, which had 17 minutes, maybe, of dialogue, nominated for, like, best writing. Really? <laughs> yes. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Well, because it was an episode shot in... with no dialogue, so everything had to be, like, emoted. So it was, like, Quiet Place. In a way, yeah. Yeah. But, like, and you just... You can't talk. Like, you could try, but you Speaking can't. of TV and stuff, I finished WandaVision. Did you really? Thoughts, please. So good. Okay. So, in my opinion, and a lot of people have not been happy with me that I said this. Ooh, ooh, okay. I, I spoil it for me, because I don't know if I'll ever watch it. It's not a spoiler. I, at the end of the episode, the, the, the finale, it, it wasn't my favorite episode... Okay. But the post credit classic Marvel scenes where they like, you know, reveal some shit at the end, they are building up some amazing storyline. And I am so fucking ready for it. Do you want to see um something that I found? Because I'm not a one division watcher. Uh, but I did come across this on Twitter and it tickled me fucking pink. Those are drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> and what I just love is it's just so good. Like, the Photoshop was great on that headpiece. But... <laughs> well, spoiler, there is a version of Vision that looks like that. I know. Oh, okay. That's... I figured. <laughs> but yeah, the I mean, the show itself was very, like... Bigger picture, 
Okay. It puts a lot in perspective, and it's... I like when shows do that. It's, I, like it's, when, um, I like when they build a story like, for even the though, future. Even though it's a Marvel... St- I mean, like they, not only do they do that, like they're, they definitely have a ton of content coming out down yeah. the line, but for this particular season, you really... It's pretty much based around like the five stages of grief. Oh, okay. Because like, you saw Infinity War, right? No. No? The only Avengers movie I saw was Endgame. Okay. Well, in Infinity War, again, my rules are... It's past a year. Vision dies. Yeah. Thanos kills Vision. He takes a stone out of his head. Uh, dead. Um, so in the show, she manifests this whole... Manifest. She manifests this whole town and brings Vision back, but as like a fabrication. Oh. So as time goes on, like it gets revealed that like, you know, Wanda, like he, he's dead and gone. Like he yeah. can't do anything about it. So... It's a lot. Of, there's like like the five stages of grief. It's like um, I don't know them in order. Anger, 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 resentment, resentment, grief, uh, acceptance, or denial was the first one. Denial. There's denial, anger, bargaining. That's death. Is it? I'm pretty sure it's death. I mean, or what's um, you know what? I'm gonna you fact check it? this. I'll fact check it. Keep keep talking to me. I know bargaining is, de- is death. Um, but yeah, what they're what they're building up to. Is going to be so exciting because uh, it's still too early, so I don't want to say a lot. But in terms of the content that's coming out, like what they do with Wanda and what they do with some of the other characters, it's going to be very, very exciting. And and Falcon and Winter Soldier comes out very soon. Okay. The five stages of grief model postulates that those experiencing grief go through a series of five emotions. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Okay. Yeah. I think the five stages of grief and death are probably the same. I wouldn't doubt it. But, um, yeah. So, like, in the bigger picture, as you go through the episodes, you see, at the very end, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. It was great. Very well written. Cool. All right. Well, maybe I will give it a try. I don't know. I have to get a Disney Plus account then. Like I said, if you do give it a shot, the first two episodes are a little bizarre. Mm-hmm. Third one hits, you're going to be like, okay, let's go. Cool. I will say... In terms of shows, you did tell me about two um, two sentence horror stories coming out of the new season. Flashback to an older episode last week, but we also talked about it like a oh yeah previously. Well, I'm yeah. going to introduce you to it, and then you introduce me that there's a new season. So uh, yeah. we're ha- friends helping friends, if you ask me. Super, Super friends. Patico, you're too far away. Finger touch, <sighs> touching <So>, tips. <laughs> I watched the first two episodes, and I immediately texted you. I don't like this new season. So you saw the first four sentences? Yeah. Four <laughs> sentences in and I'm I'm not having it. I don't want any more. The some of the some of them are okay. Um there's actually a zombie one that is pretty interesting. And uh I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I'm probably gonna like it. I, I just started uh what we do in the shadows. Ooh. Wait, what? What we do in the shadows is a it's what a, we do in the shadows. It's a <laughs> I know what I do in the shadows. It's a <laughs> <laughs> it's a parody vampire show. Hmm. It's it's actually pretty funny. A parody? So it's like funny. Yeah. Ooh. And what, what's it's, it on? It's it's on Hulu. It actually, it's got to Hulu. I'm pretty sure. Now bitch. it's it's funny and ooh teeth. <laughs> it's uh, it's not a spoiler, but one of the my my coworker was like, "You're gonna relate really hard to one of the characters because they're considered an energy vampire," and it's just like. This plain ass dude that's just in an office setting, and when he talks to you, he just drains the life out of you because it's so boring. Wow, I do you I, feel valid? Do I think you feel his seen? I think his name's like Kevin Robinson or something. <laughs> it's just like, hey, yeah, so you know, I went golfing the other day, and then, like as they're talking, like he walks away, and the person listening is just like, <laughs> it just like die. Yeah, you know, I really got to work on my one putter. It's really just kind of my one putter. Weak. I don't know. I don't know golf terms. Just I, I, that, can't, I can't believe you didn't take the opportunity to be like, I gotta work on my strokes. Damn. I don't know golf terms. You play mini golf though, right? I play monster mini golf. It's the same thing, but no. Girl, it's a black light club with fucking music pumping. I'm just there to be gay and dance. I'm not Mo- there to play the game. Monster mini golf is just mini golf that you can see your mustard stains with. It's not the kind of stains I'm seeing. Your man mustard stains. <laughs> <laughs> But I do want to say, because we, uh, we were on the topic of zombie apocalypses, 
because I put us on that topic. <laughs> There's an episode of Two Sentence Horror Stories where essentially, like, this stuff comes around and it makes people into, like, just mindless zombies. Okay. But it's contained into, like, a warehouse and people are like, as long as we, like, don't let it get out, like, we'll be okay. As long as it's contained, like, we'll be good. And, like, there we go. You, you've, It's a contained problem. It's not going to spread. No Resident Evil giving it to the whole world. I'll be okay with that. If it goes the whole world, get rid of me. Knock me out. I want to go out swinging, though. See, like, for me... I see two scenarios in my head because I I'm very opposite of you. Like I'm going out until the end. Um, no, I'm gonna be sarcastic until I fucking. And I'm gonna be so cynical while I'm dying. I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna be dying, and I'm gonna be like, Alex, don't forget that, bitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck you. How'd you know I was gonna do that? <laughs> oh. Um, Alex, it's still my podcast, and <laughs> dead. <laughs> Alex, I changed the passwords. Just <laughs> dying, my final words. <laughs> You're nothing without me. <laughs> <laughs> you almost made me spit. Spitters are quitters. Um, Did I spit? Fair. You fought till the end. Spitters are quitters, but swallowers wallow, so. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just rhyming words. Swallow, swallow, swallows. Can I tell you um, some funny, stupid shit? Wait, hold on. Oh, what? So, the, the zombie thing. Oh, yeah. I see me. two scenarios in my head, because there's always the cliche where it's like, one of your loved ones gets turned, and you're like, I don't know what to do. I hate to say it. If if the world is at unrest, and there's no hope, I know it's not you. You're gone. Sorry. Yeah. If it's one of those things, like Shaun of the Dead, where there's like hope for a cure, and then you tie your best friend up and put him in the shed, <laughs> that's another thing. But at the same time, though, you like you tie your best friend and put him in the shed. You got to feed them, so you got to kill people. You got a Santa Clarita diet them. See, Santa Clarita diet. That's my kind of zombie. Well, it's it fully walks, coherent. It talks. It's completely conscious. It works. It pays its taxes. <laughs> they just want to be working members of society too. <laughs> I want my zombies out here making money for Jeff Bezos like the rest of us. What? <laughs> God, what a shame that show got canceled. I know. And they were really, they really were building like a good story arc. I was, and they ended it on such they, a cliffhanger. They ended it on such a, like all they had to do. Timothy Olyphant, I need to know if you're okay. All they had to do was make one episode. Mm-hmm. All they needed Tie to do up was the loose ends. One episode, make it like two hours long and just end it that way. Did I ever get you into the show um, Dead to Me? Did you watch Dead to Me? You've mentioned it several times. I've just never okay. watched it. <laughs> Well, it's really fucking funny. Is it dead, dead to me or dead like me? Dead to me. There's dead to me shows? and dead like me. We might have shows. had this conversation already, but no, I feel this... very, very powerful things about both shows. <laughs> okay. Dead like me is a great show, but that that show sadly was canceled far before it had the chance to flourish. It was it was truly ahead of its time. Had that show come out like a couple years ago, it'd be it'd be bigger than Shit's Creek, in my humble gay opinion. Because it's, it's, it was a genius show. You've got a cynical bitch who's a grim reaper. Her last words were, ah, oh, shit. And then she got annihilated by a flying fucking uh, toilet in that came in from a spaceship. You know what's funny you say that? Is, uh, I Did finished... you die from a, a flying toilet? <laughs> no, it was mostly the catchphrase thing. Because um, I finished The Witcher. And one of his catchphrases, he would always has <laughs> very solemn. Just, Fuck. Yep. Cause just like butcher and the boys with cunt. Mm-hmm. Like I, I love a good, I love a good raunch. But you have all of these like oh, wait, really funny, crazy, unique personalities acting as Grim Reapers with a really good like uh, a character dynamic between them. It, it was, was a really great show. It was you who told me that Utopia got canceled, right? Yes. That's fucking god. I know. And then t- Dead to Me, which is another great show. It's a dark comedy on Netflix. Um, they got picked up for their third season, but I think it's going to be their last one. Which makes me sad. Such a bummer. Such a great show. What's a sh- There's a show that they're ending. Oh, they're ending Pose. It's another show that you've never watched. But or it's heard a of. really good show. Pose is a show. It's a Ryan Murphy show on FX. It actually has a lot to do with like the gay ballroom scene in the late 80s, early 90s. Ryan Murphy and gay stuff. I would have never guessed. I know. I know. And that's but it's actually really that good. <laughs> um, but it's actually, it was a really good show. But they've had two strong seasons. I mean, I... 
they announced that this season is going to be their last, and it makes me sad because the sh- the writing is actually really good on the show, and the characters that they have are really good. Um, there's this one uh, one character, her name's Electra, and she there's this one scene where she just fucking read this bitch to filth. Oh, <coughs> the, excuse me. The kind of shit that you live for. Um, one hundred percent. My throat. <laughs> what's going on? What's happening to me? Speaking of more gay uh, things. You and I had a very simpatico moment the other day in terms of a very unison favorite person, Billy Eichner. I do love Billy Eichner for a lot of reasons you don't. Yeah. Mostly to fuck him. (coughs) Absolutely. I I don't know what's going on with my throat. (laughs) Anaplactic. I'm I'm turning into a zombie. Oh my God, somebody help. No, you started talking about Billy Eichner and you're just trying to relax so you can hork it down. Um... That's a gross term, I just said. That was sorry. actually disgusting. Yeah. I'm actually upset with myself. That's... I did see a tweet, though, and it said, bitches be like, I'm shy, and then throw the whole dick. And I was like, it's me. I'm bitches. <laughs> yep. Is, is for <laughs> <It's> me? me? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, like, it's so uh, good. What um, a great meme. Um, um, yeah, he's a, um, <laughs> he's got a movie that he's making. It's the first gay rom-com. That he is writing and starring in. And I feel, I feel like that's huge. That's a pretty monumental thing. I hate that it's called bros. It is called bros. Because it's just further perpetuating that mask for mask bullshit stereotype. But I I really hope it, it's called bros, but it's about, like, just two fairies. It's a gay rom-com, man. Like That doesn't mean they're going to be fairies. I don't they could have wings and fly, like Tinkerbell, with glitter air. Just, oh! You're not going to want to see if it has glitter in it, though. I'll look at glitter on a TV screen. I won't let it be near you're, me. You're going to be life. in the theater like Gallagher with the plastic. So you just throw it away when you're done. <laughs> Can you imagine though? Like two fairies flying around and like when they're ready to do some mischief, they, they got their, their fairy glitter and they just go. Ah. That's uh, exactly how it's suspected. I'm assuming you've watched this happen on a drag show. No. Really? Nope. This is just what goes on in my fucked up little head. <laughs> I just use my my BFA and think about all that. BFA being big fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> is that really what it means? Oh, well, BFA is like uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts, but <laughs> a bit like <laughs> I don't actually have a BFA <laughs> in terms of college, but I do have a BFA if we're talking about my ass. So yeah, That's been all over Twitter lately. Yeah, the grinder, B- grinder tweeted the other day. They were like, "I'm weaponizing my BFA," and then in parentheses put "big fat ass." And I was like, "I can't wait to say that in front of Alex." So you have the BFA without having a BFA. <laughs> Tell me you have a BFA without having a BFA. Yeah, it's a new TikTok challenge. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible and awful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh. Uh, how are we doing on time? We're at like 52 minutes. Perfect. We're, we're, we're closing it on the so, hour. I, I have two things left in terms of my my notes. Um, my first one is we were talking about this earlier because candy happened and we just were oh, ravenous. Candy. God, gummies. Favorite thing. Gummies. Jelly beans. M&Ms. Another club. Yeah. <laughs> candy. Candy. Another candy. Sugar rush. No sleep. Next candy. Did I, tell you, did I tell you Jen Mazza said to me? Shout out to Jen Mazza. What's up? She was... If you remember Jen Mazza being on our... Free Britney episode. episode. Whoop, whoop. I was at her house giving... um, at <laughs> Her house giving. I was at her house giving her son a haircut. And we were talking about, like, when things start to open up again. And, like, the world kind of starts resuming normal activities in terms of, like, going out and socializing. She said, once I get my vaccine, I'm just going to go to every restaurant and get every type of bread I can. And I just want you to be there with me doing the Lady Gaga thing. And I was like, you mean bread? Bread, another bread, another bread. Next place, no butter. <laughs> like, <laughs> and she was such, she's like, yes, I need you to do exactly that. <laughs> yeah, it. I gotta tell you, man. Like, I, I feel like I've been doing well in terms eat, of dieting, eating healthy. But like, once the thought, like the other day, I was like, I borderline started sweating because I started thinking about ice cream. Oh my god. I mean, like, not literally, but, like, I was very heavily thinking about ice cream. And I was like, fuck, man, I should really get some ice cream. No, don't do it. Don't get some ice cream. No, I should really get some ice cream. I was like, this must be how a crack is like. Mm-hmm. That's not. I, I, I don't even want that to be. Stone. I don't even want. <laughs> 
Like, I don't even mean for that to be a joke, but, like, just that fiend, that fiending feeling. The that number one addiction is sugar. sugar. Absolutely. Oh, it, and it's and it's the addiction that they keep fucking shoving down your throat. Because mm-hmm. it kills you real, real slow. Obesity is a problem in America. <laughs> Imagine I just go this whole rant. <laughs> As I'm... I actually... So, wait. The part of the reason why I was on the standby list for the vaccine is because I technically qualify as somebody with a pre-existing condition because I'm fat. Yeah. I had no idea that being fat was a pre-existing condition. I just thought that was, like, a health hazard. Yeah, no, apparently... I didn't realize, like, it qualified me for shit. Apparently, obesity meets uh, meets the standards, and so does asthma. I don't have asthma. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm just saying in terms of, like, just... Being some, a smoker. Something, you you could yeah. Like, oh, my God, Dude, my Misty Slims. That, that pisses me off, actually. I... I don't know how they, like, terminate... Terminate. <laughs> determine who qualifies i'm just having like like word vomit in my head so great sentence why are you here you here for the vaccine what do you have smoker get out (laughs) (laughs) arnold schwarzenegger give me the vaccine he's a terminator amazing he's a terminator i don't know but i'm like him doing that would do that it was great do you know john connor (laughs) fuck that bitch no vaccine for you i can't do an arnold schwarzenegger i have no idea what that was that was terrible i don't i (laughs) I said at the beginning of this episode, I'm not good at impressions. You know, very good. <laughs> and you met the guy. You shook his hand. I shook his hand. I didn't have a full blown conversation with the guy. I touched him. You wanted to touch his son. I did. His son is hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's hot. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's how you want to feel when you're done with him. <laughs> fucking hate you <laughs> what else did you have to say you I, just said you had two things written down yeah uh in terms of like my really like my closing argument is um not argument but argument <laughs> i was like we're about to close with an argument my clo- <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> 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 my my closing thoughts are uh if you remember earlier in uh last week i sent you something in terms of people really like i'm gonna put heavy quotes on this but like over glamorizing the word normalization like normalize this normalize that oh yeah just fucking live your life no apologies you, no one should have to feel the need to normalize like i'm really just gonna take a day to myself and people should normalize self-care it's like <sighs> take care of yourself no one's gonna hate you for that if you've had a rough week or even if you're just like not in a great place mentally or emotionally do a little something for yourself no one's gonna stop you but here's the problem with that because people have normalized quotations around normalize normalizing things so much that like self-care self-care is not going to mcdonald's right self-care is not like fucking like jerking off 16 times a day self-care is more than that self-care is more than just like treat yourself yeah that's treat yourself people yeah people are turning that's actually a very good like comparison is people are taking normalize and making it treat yourself where it's like it's almost like an excuse now like no like normalize eating a sandwich in bed no yeah. Why do I? Ha- why you want crumbs? You want ants in the bed? You don't have to normalize you want it. Want ants in your pants? You don't. You don't have to normalize it. But if you decide to go get Taco Bell at two in the morning and you want to eat in your bed in your underwear and watch a movie, do you? Do more of what makes you happy as long as it's not hurting anybody. Who told Who you what cares? I did on Saturday? Who told you what I did right now? I've been I've been with you for the last two hours. Well, you didn't see me watch. You didn't watch my pants come off. <laughs> Pulls out a bag of Taco Bell. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, I thought I smelled beef. <laughs> no, I'm actually boycotting Taco Bell until they bring back the Fiesta potatoes. I know that they're going to, but they haven't yet. They're still pushing that nacho fry. Ugh. They're okay, but I can't eat but them like I compare. eat the potatoes. No, absolutely not. Nothing compares. Yeah. Nothing compares to you, potatoes. <laughs> I knew I smelled beef. I feel like that's a compliment. <laughs> I smell like beef. I smell like beef. Wait, Do you remember that video of the little girl? It's a little girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I smell like beef. But, but yeah, that that whole normalized thing, like, it really bothers me because it's like, like normal normalized standing up for yourself when you don't feel correct. It's like you should just do that anyway. If you don't feel comfortable, or if you, if you have a reason to stand up, do it. Normally sitting down. You don't always have to stand up. Normalize leaving the... Fu- like, just do you. Yeah. Again, do you. And don't have... If it don't doesn't hurt feel anybody. Need to, like, va- People say that because it's like... It, they feel like it's a term of validation to, like, make it seem like it's it's okay. But, like, who cares? Do... Maybe it's not okay. But just fucking do it anyway. what you like 
as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. Absolutely. Do what you like. Just don't be a dick about it. I agree. Life fucking motto. <laughs> and on that note, did we even say the name of the show at the beginning of the episode? Oh, by the way, this is Super Friend Sit Down. <laughs> Welcome to the Joe Rogan Experience. <laughs> Oh my god! We're gonna get sued. No, we're not. <laughs> Can welcome, you imagine? welcome to the Rojogan extravaganza. And goodbye. Wait. Speaking of Joe Rogan, um, did you see? Nope. I mean, it's it's not obviously his article, but like he posted it. Apparently, a cephalopod, so like a squid, okay, solved a children's puzzle the other day. I love that. It's great. Animals right? are so fucking smart. That's so cool. Speaking also of cephalopods and squids and stuff, Patrick Starr is getting his own TV show. Like Spongebob Patrick Starr? No, like the actor. Yes. <laughs> what? Well, listen, there's an influencer <laughs> named Patrick Starr. You better calm down. Is it really? Yes. Well, okay. Sassiness mm. retracted. Bam. Mm. He's a YouTuber. Mm. He's got a whole makeup line. He was in a lot of hot water because he like... Made some bad remarks about a Selena Gomez product. Whew. Wow. I totally would have known any You're of that. You're Patrick Star, my Patrick Star, different stars. <laughs> yeah. They might be related though. <laughs> you never know. Join us next oh week. Oh my god. Join us next week when Patrick and Patrick do some things. No, when we have coffee with Lou on. I know. Ah. I was making a joke. Yeah, we're actually gonna have a pretty interactive experience and Can't wait. uh it's gonna be real fun. We gotta make I'm sure actually we get very nothing, excited. No coffee on the equipment. <laughs> we're gonna figure it out. It's t- t- like t- we t- always do. We're gonna figure it out as we go. We're gonna figure it out. I mean, it could we we could have a science experiment where the SFS is. We could have a thermos. I Who knows? I don't know. Whatever's more convenient, because obviously the dude's got to bring it all. So yeah. But um, join us next week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. He's been Vince. I've been Alex. This is Super Friends Sit Down. Uh, see ya. Goodbye.